All right, hey everybody, this is Sona64, and I've noticed that I have a video up where I'm playing uh, Ready Clips, and uh, it's Ready Clips 1.4 that I'm playing. I didn't really go over everything that's like uh, new, or I guess pretty much interesting. There's, there's a lot to talk about in 1.4. There are some things that they kept from 1.3, so uh, those things might not be worth going over, but I kind of just, I guess I just want to give a quick rundown of the game because, I don't know, there, there are probably people who maybe want to look up Ready Clips and they want to, like, you know, see, like, maybe a glimpse of what Ready Clips looks like, or maybe, you know, um, they don't know about Ready Clips, they're just coming to the I don't know, just heard about Ready Clips so they want to look it up on YouTube, so anyway, um, uh, you can go to ReadyClips, www.readyclips.net, and you can find a link from there to go and download the game. The, uh, it's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Uh, the build that I'm playing right now is version 1.4, as I mentioned. Uh, Lara Edition, or Alara, Lara, that's not how you say it, but that's the, um, new version of it right now, but, you know, as the game matures, there will be new versions and it will get better and better because the developer is awesome. I just thought I'd put that bit in there. So once you install it for whatever you have, Mac, Windows, or Linux, because it works for all three, uh, it will bring you to this profile page. At the moment, I don't have a user account. I have to donate. You have to donate or contribute. Contributing can be a number of things, but I mean, the best way to get a user account is to Honestly, giving him money for a game that he's been developing on his own. Well, I guess mostly on his own. It's kind of, it's also sort of community driven, you know, because the community, uh, they also uh, contribute things, which is why, you know, if you contribute something, you can get a user account. But anyway, um, I don't have a user account, but when you get one, you can, you can put all your stuff in, your private key and your username and uh, when you come in game, there's you get a little uh, I, guess, I guess a little name tag. Uh, it just shows up in the scoreboard, shows that hey, this is this person and they're special. They donated, so they get a user account because they're special, you know. Uh, so yeah, user accounts, awesome. I'm kind of glad they added the 1.4 because it's like when I donate, then like people will see me when I come in and it says. Hey, that's in Persona 64. I know him. He makes the YouTube videos, and they'll know it's actually me and not somebody who's trying to play like me or, or be me. It's actually me, you know? Uh, let's start over here at profile because that's pretty important. This is the name right here, player name, that, that people will see when uh, you come into game. So, you know, choose whatever you want. Obviously, I'm Persona 64, and my clan is Wazoo, so I'll put that after the uh, name. Uh, this isn't really necessary. Uh, the clan tag does not have to be in the name. I just put it there. Just just point that bit out, you know. Um, the color tone is based on uh, just a mixture of the three colors, red, green, and blue. So, as you can see. Um, if you know how to mix colors, then you completely understand this. This is, this is idiot proof here. I mean, honestly, you can get whatever color you want, really. Uh, you can also choose between being a male or female. I'm going to wait for them to rotate so you can see how male dif differs from female. See that? Bigger. Smaller. Fatter. Skinnier. Muscular. Uh, actually, that's kind of mean. I'm not going to say muscular and feminine because that would say that would mean that girls can't be muscular. Girls got muscles. Um, the girls I've dated don't really have much muscles, but, you know, there's that. Anyway, uh, also a new little thing they added to 1.4 is vanity items. So you can actually make your character, or, I'm sorry, your avatar look different, you know, than other uh, players. As you can see right here, I've added a badge, which uh, when he rotates around, you'll see on the front, Raptor right foot, Raptor left foot. I mean, it's going to rotate. You can see the badge. See? Uh, oop. I took the foot off. But as you can see, uh, you can add whatever you want. So I'm just going to add the things I had back. I had a badge. I had uh, raptor foot left and raptor foot right. 
Uh, I had wings. Wings are kind of cool. Kind of wish they were bigger, but I guess that would make you a bigger target. So the smaller the wings, the better. Uh, also, I believe I had oh horns. I had horns because I wanted to be a devil. That's why I'm red. Red devil. And uh, this one is probably the most complicated complicated of all the options is the view options. See, um, uh, you get two uh, colors. Uh, you can't really see it right here, but the two colors you get will def like show how you are, and they really depend on what game type it is, or maybe not what game type. Well, yeah, what game type and what team you're on, you know, because FFA isn't really a team game, but uh, you do get a neutral color when you're when you're in FFA. So, uh, primary color is one of the colors, as you can see here. I mean, it, it's kind of it's kind of, I'm not going to describe them all, but you can pretty much tell from what the words say uh, what which color will be which. I'm just going to move these over so you can see what each of these says. Team colors only, profile not used. So, you know, uh, if it's FFA, this main color will be neutral or gray. If it's a team game, blue, red, yellow, and... I, oh, green, right. Let me move this back over to where it was. Profile color regardless of team. I, wait, was it that? Hold on. Let me go to green. No, it wasn't that. It was... Most likely that one. Wait, was it this one? Might have been. No, I think it. I think it was two. Okay, okay. And these other ones, this uh, as you can see, profile color when neutral, and it's t it's team when team. So, if you're if it's a neutral game like FFA, that one color will be your profile color, and when it's a team game, it'll be a team color. So as you can see, my profile color is red, and so in FFA I'll be all red. But in a team game, I will have slight green. And I'll just tell you about the secondary color because uh, I know it looks different. It, it should be red, but with this option right here, profile color mixed with team. So basically, my profile color is red, and since I'm on uh, the green team, it's mixed with red. So it's red plus green. Uh, as you can see, the secondary color is red plus yellow. Uh, right here, as you can see, it's red plus blue, which is purple. It's kind of cool. And right here, it's just red plus gray, but, you know. There are a couple other options here. Profile color mixed with team, but when you're uh, neutral, uh, it's just back to red. So I, I like that. I like the idea of mixing colors, so I leave it like that. Also, they let you, uh, you know, hold the weapon to see what you look like when you're holding a weapon. Uh should probably mention that one of the new newest weapons is the mines. That's a mine right there. And I will have a video up soon where I'm playing Kaboom, which is the new game type. You know, I'm talking about this stuff. Let me get out of here and I'm just going to OK this and actually go to offline practice so you can see all the stuff that they've pretty much added. Uh, demo lets you play back previously recorded games which is kinda cool. Uh, I think previously when you if you wanted to play a demo you had to type something into the console but now if you as you can see I um, I saved a game and I can replay it back if I want to. Editing is you know if you want to edit a map if you want to start with a new map you usually just go to right here and then just type in new map and I will name it I guess. Uh, Deathmatch, you already know what that is. Capture flag, defend the flag, which basically, if you've come from Call of Duty, is domination. Although, if you want the same type of effect that uh, Call of Duty's domination has, you do quick. If you want regular defend the flag, like if you play Battlefield and you play Conquest, or I, I forget, I think it's called Conquest in Battlefield. Um, yeah, it is Conquest. Uh, where you have to. If a flag is already captured, you have to uncapture it and then capture it for your team. That's how this defend the flag is played. And king basically, uh, well, it's king of the hill. 
So if you know how to play King of Hell, there's that. Bomber Ball is more of a sport type type of game type. So there's a ball and in, in, usually located in the center of the map, and there's two goals usually because that just makes sense. Two teams, two goals, one ball. Uh, this is comparable to basketball or football or soccer. To be honest, uh, bomber ball is a mixture of all those, all those sports, and you can actually pass the ball as well, which is kind of cool. But the the um, little the little kicker behind bomber ball is that if you hold the ball for too long, it's going to explode on you, which is unfortunate. You know, you can turn the timer off or make the timer like really really long so that you don't explode. So you can actually play it like soccer. You can hold the ball forever. But, I mean, that key, that makes it more of a team game when the ball is going to explode, so you have to pass it to the next teammate, and then the timer will reset. Time trial is, well, compete for the fastest lap. Uh, obviously, time trial just makes sense. It's kind of... And Gauntlet is, is, is a new mode. I played it once, but I don't know. I just I guess I just didn't really get into it. Uh, it it kind of feels like... Uh, I guess, you know, get to this goal uh, as fast as you can and don't die by other people and then you score when you get to that goal, I guess. It's 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 weird. I, I, get, I didn't really, really get into it and I feel bad because I'm trying to describe it, but I didn't really play it so much. So if anybody has played Gauntlet, just in the comment section, can you just explain it so, so I don't have to like... Because I tried it and, I mean, maybe I didn't get it, but... I, I wouldn't really classify it as a game mode that I want to play so you know there are game modes you want to play and game modes you don't want to play so anyway um, the one nice thing about uh, Red Eclipse is not only does it have modes but it has mutators as well so I'm going to choose deathmatch because that way I can show you all of the mutators uh, multi allows for four teams so uh, a map where you would have multi is where's Keystone because Keystone has four sides as well as fourplex which is why it's called Fourplex. But, um, yeah, Keystone is one of my favorite four-sided maps. And so is, uh, no, not Institute. Uh, damn it, I forget where that map is. I, yeah, I forget what it's called, actually. I haven't played it in forever. But, yeah, uh, Keystone is a four-sided map, so uh, Multi would work pretty well for that. Uh, free-for-all is, well, that's pretty obvious. I'm not, I'm not explaining that. That's free-for-all. Free for all, you know, everyone for themselves. Co-op is basically anybody who joins the game will end up on the same team, and you will always play against other bots. It's basically, I, don't, I like to call it. Well, that's what it's called. It's called co-op, or uh, you know, like if you play like zombies or something in, in Call of Duty, everybody's just playing on the same team against bots, you know, NPCs, or whatever you want to call them, computers. Instagib is, you know, one shot, one kill, although I don't think that's an accurate description of it because if you scope in and you see one person, you can shoot through a person and kill the person behind them. So I'd, I'd say it's more like a insta-kill, which is why it's called Instagib. Gib is kill. Jibbing is, is killing. Um, so insta-kill, instant death. Everybody gets one health and you shoot them once and they're dead. Just, that's just how it is. You kick them once, they're dead. Uh, you hit them with an explosive once, they're dead. It's just an instant shot, kill, death kind of mode. Medieval is uh, a mode dedicated to swords. Uh, and also I should mention here, you can mix game, you can mix mutators. So you see these three clicked the co-op, the instagib, and the medieval. Uh, medieval is with swords, but since I have instagib already clicked, it will mix instagib with medieval. So, uh, in instagib, without medieval, you will get a rifle, but with medieval, you get a sword. So, the sword will be an instant kill. Uh, you know, the grenades and the rockets are also instant kills, but it kind of like, it's kind of cool. Uh, with kaboom, and also, as you can see, like, there are certain mutators that you can't mix because kaboom is everybody gets explosives medieval is everybody gets swords you can't have swords and explosives I mean I don't know it, it does seem kinda cool to mix both those game types that you would have the explosives and those swords but anyway that's just not how the game works right now so uh, kaboom basically you get grenades and you get uh, mines the mines that I was talking about earlier and well, 
that's all you get and you can spam them as much as you want but you have to wait for them to reload so you have to play smart and you have to use them wisely and it's basically it's called kaboom for a reason because there's a lot of explosion going on I'm I'm gonna have a video uploaded for that so if it's not already uploaded for the kaboom game type or kaboom mutator so you know just check that out duel is basically one-on-one -on -one battles so let's say six people join a server everybody goes um one-on-one -on -one and everybody you know if you're watching you get to watch those two people play against each other and whoever lives gets to play the next round if you die then you give up around and the person who won plays another person who's also in the server and at the end of the you know at the end of the game whoever you know has the most this is also you should know that this is deathmatch so uh if i choose capture the flag you know it um it takes out certain mutators like it takes out ffa because capture the flag is a team game type so is the defend the flag so is bomber ball they're all they're all like there are certain mutators that won't go with certain game types time trial as you can see it's you can't choose co-op or multi because time trial is it's a more or less FFA it's, it's more or less FFA you know because it's like everybody is against each other you know for the best time so let me go back to deathmatch so I can explain the rest of these mutators survivor is basically like search and destroy you know although it's more destroy the other team <laughs> than it is like you know search and destroy but if you want to make it like you know really fun you can take survivor uh... I, I'd, I'd like to go survivor and instagib usually choose medieval and insta because instagib without the medieval just it just gets crazy because i'm not i don't know i wouldn't really call myself that good at insta so i like medieval because i like to be up close and personal and you can go ahead and choose like uh... capture the flag you know so like Basically, you know, you have to capture the flag before you die or something like that, you know. So, uh, uh, let me go over the rest of these because I'm, I'm getting sidetracked because I'm talking about my favorite mutators and game types. Um, classic uh, is, it's not, I wouldn't really call it a new mutator. It's back in Ready Clips 1.3 uh, when you chose Deathmatch. It was basically, as you can see right here, it was classic deathmatch. You had to pick up weapons off the ground, and you started with a pistol, and you just find your weapons and you kill everybody. But since people usually chose from 1.3, Ready Clips 1.3, they chose Arena a lot. They, uh, the developer decided to make the regular uh, game game type, you know, um, deathmatch Arena, like just by default. So if you want to pick up weapons, you choose classic. If you don't choose classic, you get to uh, pick your weapons. In fact, in all these modes right here, without any mutators, you always get to pick up your weapons. W or, I'm sorry, without classic. Or w without classic, kaboom, or medieval, or insta. You know, you always get to choose your weapons. So, let me go back to deathmatch so I can show you. Anyway, onslaught basically uh, fills the, uh, uh, the map with you know waves of enemies so I guess uh, onslaught uh, think of horde mode in like pretty much any game like I, I like to say zombies you know so it's it's similar to co-op but like I guess it's not because it's not like you're playing against res these respawning enemies like the waves of enemies die and then like then they respawn all together again you know so that's onslaught that's how onslaught differs from co-op but you can kind of click onslaught and co-op at the same time so you can kill bots and you can kill npcs but you know that's you know that's just personal preference i guess and on the very right side of the mutators is the things that i don't usually click because i'm not a big fan of jetpack uh, jetpack is obviously you know if you jump and then press the jump button again, well, you get to fly for a short amount of time with however much impulse you have. And Vampire is when you shoot somebody, you get more health. So essentially, you're like a vampire. Like, let's say a vampire bit somebody. The vampire sucks the blood and it, I guess, gets more healthy. That's how vampire works here. Deal damage, get more health. Resize is kind of the opposite to Vampire, because I, I believe in Vampire when you 
uh, shoot people, you get bigger as you get more health, and you become a bigger target. Resize, when you get hit, you get smaller. And if you got like one health, you're really tiny. But when you have 100 health, you're normal size. In Vampire, you can usually go up to about 200 health. So you become like twice your size. Expert is headshots only. So honestly, the best way to play Expert is probably with Insta. Because it, it just becomes... It, it just, it's kind of streamlined. Insta or I guess Medieval Insta, Insta Gib. Uh, it, just, it just makes sense to me. There are a good number of maps in this game. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and count them all. You download the game, you can count them your damn self. I'm not going to count them. But there's a good amount of maps in this game. And you should also know that certain game types or certain modes will not work with uh, certain maps. You know, uh, I mean, you can choose them, but they're usually not in the rotation because they're not the best map for the game type. But you can choose them. Like for example, capture the flag on Longest Yard. It, it, Longest Yard is not a capture the flag map, so really don't choose that map for it. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are flags on that map so you can play capture the flag on that map, but it's not a capture the flag map. So just don't do that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, also the voting system is kind of cool, where when a map ends, you can vote for your next map. So basically, when the map is when the game is over, you press F3, the voting thing will come up. But you'll pretty much just see this layout here when you when you uh, want to vote. If you want to vote maps, you just go to maps and then you just vote for whatever game type, mutators, and map you want. And it will show up in votes here, and people will vote for whichever one they want to play. So that's the rundown of, I guess, the actual like choosing of maps and maps in general. Uh, variables, this game has a lot of variables. In fact, that's one of the reasons why most people actually still play this game is because Ready Clips is, it just has so many variables. You can turn Ready Clips into pretty much any game that you've ever played. If that game that you're thinking of is a first-person shooter because you can't really turn it into like Need for Speed or Tetris. <laughs> Tetris. I can I can just imagine somebody trying to turn Ready Clips into Tetris. Like, how does that work? I don't know how that works, but yeah, okay, sure. Anyway, this isn't all the variables, but this is a good amount of variables that have to do with whatever map and mutators that you have in a game. So. I'm, I'm really not going to explain every single one of these mutators. Uh, there, I will put a link to the wiki, though, because I believe the wiki has all the map... or uh, not maps. Well, they probably do talk about the maps on there. But they have all the mutators, and, and they're, pro they're like in development right now, so they kind of talk about the mutators a little bit. So if you want to know about mutators, you want to know how to change your Ready Clips game, you just go there and you can tinker with Ready Clips with the amount of variables it has and just make whatever you want out of it. If you want a shotgun that shoots at like 10 miles a second, you can do that. If you want a rifle that shoots automatically, you can do that. Just You can just do so much with the variables. It's ridiculous. Uh, we should probably go over the options menu since that's probably the last thing I want to go over. I would show you some in-game like gameplay but I have enough videos on that so I don't need to do that let's start at graphics uh, this game is really really pretty as, as you can well I mean I'll show you after I'll just I'll choose a game type and you can just see at the end but um I'm I probably not gonna like explain every single one of these options here but you know this game has shaders and you know water waterfalls uh, I guess if you want to make the game run very, very well, you'll only choose the green options. As you can see, green is fast. Uh, so let's say you have an uh, old 10-year-old computer with like a single-core processor at like 3.0 gigahertz of processing speed. You're probably going to want to choose the green options because... If you want, if you're gonna like, you know, 
play this game on high settings you're gonna want a good computer and as you can see I don't have all the high settings chosen like for example with the grass I don't have slow fade on because I don't notice a difference with grass you know as far as like the fade is I just I chose most of the yellow settings the bump map is cool because it kind of like it gives more of a 3d aspect to the game I just don't have it like marked off because I don't know I just want the game to run better some of these like options they don't really change the game that much like like uh, for example um, let's see uh, glare uh, the difference between subtle and glowy is very small you you won't even notice and I've also noticed that like I can take off like for example refraction reflection and caustics and I'll probably still be getting the same FPS as before so these are all like slightly different but I if you try to streamline your options like to, to the green ones or to the yellow ones or to the red ones you'll notice like different FPS uh, drops and and like increases so you know just just choose your settings based on that it, these are my settings right here and you'll you know what I actually don't know what this one is I, I click on this sometimes but you know uh, if someone wants to explain what fixed t-joints world sparklies is in the comment section that'd be great anyway um, this is also an option that I haven't seen before the post effects this I actually haven't looked at this yet but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this is just extra things to make the game look a little better or actually you know it looks like it just like tweaks things in the game like for example the bloom so if you, if you know what bloom is this obviously uh, changes certain things um, yeah I, I'm over here just looking at this stuff but I don't I've never touched this stuff I don't know what it is but if you want to explain what this is as well that's cool but this doesn't look important to me just the graphics uh, but you should know that Ready Clips runs on pretty much any system it's very low spec but it looks pretty so you know what I'll instead of oh I forgot to talk about the other five options what the hell <laughs> let's start at the bottom auto exec uh, you know you put in your commands into the game and you change it as you can see I have um I have two like scripts here that a, a buddy of mine's and the clan made for me. Uh, one of these is the gameplay recording HUD, which basically rec uh, it, re it removes some things from the HUD to make, I guess, to make things a little more expert pro. I don't I don't know how you would call it, but basically, just it removes like some things from the HUD that I don't really care about, and that way I can just focus on the game. I know it removes the chat. It, it just keeps like the important things like when I get like double and triple kills or when I get kills in general and the extended compass the, <laughs> the extended compass god it's getting late and I don't know how to talk extended compass is another thing that this guy made and basically it just changes your ready clips how it looks and stuff you can change the color chat you can uh, there's just a lot of things that you can do with it. I'm not going to explain everything. Just uh, you can go to the forums and you can search it up and look it look it up. Because I would honestly suggest that because it, on the website or the uh, forums it explains everything in detail. Uh, controls are actually pretty simple. To be honest, all these right here, like you're go you're going to use most of these, but like for example like the numbers for each weapon you're not going to use these because at the at the very most you usually hold like three weapons you have a pistol and you have two other weapons and maybe you have a grenade maybe you have a mine but that's about it you know so these numbers for the weapons don't really matter um, when you're playing in someone else's server uh, half of these don't matter like for example moving bots and adding bots I don't have a screenshot button, but I use fraps so I can screenshot whenever I want to. Um, but the buttons are pretty straightforward. It's like any PC FPS. Uh, you can change the mount sensitivity. Yaw and pitch, I would not touch. I did that by mistake. Like, I turned the, the yaw up by mistake. And, well, yeah. If you have a weird mouse, you can mess with those settings, but I wouldn't suggest touching them. In fact, I wouldn't suggest playing first-person shooters if you have a 
freaky looking mouse and you have to you know change the yaw and stuff <laughs> uh, okay so anyway here are the sound settings pretty simple stuff uh, I haven't really changed much of this stuff except for maybe like the sound I, I don't even know if I changed the sound frequency but that's what it's up to I have two sound channels because I, I have stereo audio if you have more than two sound channels I say you're using like a 7.1 setup you've got like five or five or six speakers then you would probably go up to maybe like you know seven channel audio or something like that uh, music volume sound volume and master volume sound volume is obviously in game you know uh, effects and stuff the music volume is the music and the master volume is all the volume together and how and you know when you turn this up it basically amplifies everything in-game music edit mode music um, pretty simple mumble positional audio is if you're using the program bumble which I don't use I'm not gonna I, I think I changed some settings I'm not gonna change anything but it looks like it wanted to change <laughs> and user interface which is probably the last thing we'll look at there's about four options here there's the HUD there are a couple things here that you can change like your crosshair which is pretty important to a lot of people uh, I don't I don't usually you know touch my crosshair but you can change it to like whatever crosshairs you want to change it to there's actually a lot of crosshairs here and you can actually like add like if let's say you've made a custom crosshair you can actually put it into like your um, directory so that you can choose it if you want to. Also, when you press the uh, tab button, the stats and stuff come up. And uh, right here, you can choose what you want to see. Like, if you want to see the name above someone's head, the team above someone's head, if you want to see the impulse meter, which I usually do, the velocity meter, which I guess is how fast you're moving. Here's a scoreboard which will show you everything that you want to know about the scoreboard. Let me put the bot info on. I was wondering why I didn't see bot info. So I'll, I'll put that on because that's important to me. Uh, the console, which, well, I guess it's pretty obvious what this is. The, it gives you options for what, you know, the console and like how you want to look at it and stuff. And the chat console as well, where the chat comes up which is pretty important because sometimes people think the chat gets in the way you can make it bigger or smaller you can make it you know opaque or you can make it trans transparent it's all up to you uh... you can display your your fps to be honest i should probably turn that off but i don't want to because sometimes i don't play with fraps on and i like knowing what my what my fps is and here's the notice messages where certain things show up when you uh, when you play the game it just helps you like navigate so if you don't like those messages if you're a pro or a veteran at ready clips you know everything you'll probably have the those messages off so anyway that's um the outside of ready clips let's outside like you know the options menus and what you can do let's actually jump into a server so you know exactly what's going on I'm gonna jump into the play ready clips net because well, that's the server that's provided with the game, and, you know, most people go to the server because everybody gets the same ping because it's located in Australia. At least, for, as far as I know, it's located in Australia. It might be located in the U.S., but I assume because the maker of the game lives in Australia, the official server would also be in Australia. But, yeah, let's, um, as you can see, I've, I'm going to vote for map. I'm going to vote for Deathmatch and something that I like. I'm going to vote for Instagib, Survivor, on Battlefield, because Battlefield is a new map that I'm, I'm really liking. I'm really liking it a lot. So Instagib, Survivor, as you can see right here, it shows you everything that the game is about. Uh, Instagib, One Shot, One Kill, Survivor. It explains everything. It even gives you a little icon so you, you know, you don't even have to look at like what it's about you just you can see the icons and tell what what you're doing so we're gonna spawn me into a new round and as you can see if you like these settings like if you like how it looks uh... just you know um, you can go back in the video and just choose my settings i i gotta say as you can see right here like the map kind of shines you know this map i really like it and i'm gonna die by this oh wow okay I didn't die. 
Oh, God. Uh, okay, kicked him. Anyway, uh, also, speaking of kicking, you can, um... You saw me run on the walls. That's kind of cool. I'm kind of ladders and stuff. But the wall running is part of the parkour system, which is one of the reasons why most people like this game. Parkour, running on walls, uh, sliding and stuff, and kicking. It's, it's all cool. Right now I'm holding a grenade and uh, the inkscape rifle. One shot, one kill, as I told you. Uh, well, one shot kill. I can shoot the people, but I'd have to like freeze the bots to show you. And yeah, you can also see your feet. So that's cool. Uh, don't believe I went over everything, but that's the that's a pretty. I think this is a pretty good rundown of Ready Clips. And you know, if you want to play this game, you know, just hop on. You know, because usually servers are not populated, but you will notice that when you hop into a server, people generally usually oh god, four versus one, four versus one. They're all gonna come to the ladder. Let's get ready. Uh, they will usually join your server because everybody wants to play with humans. That's one. Uh, where are these guys at? Oh god! Oh god! No! 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 Oh! You shot your teammate! Oh! Oh well. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will have another video with you guys later. Bye.